At this point, I'm just amazed that the economy is still holding up. I would have guessed that the high interest rates would have caused more damage by now and cutting it closer. I guess the government's excess spending is stimulating the economy enough to keep it out the weeds. But the problem is what the government is doing will probably reignite inflation and force the Fed to become even more aggressive until something does actually break. In fact, according to this former Fed vice chair, Early 2024 is the X date for recession. Thanks, Andrew. Nice to be with you. It's nice to be with you. Uh, I'm so curious. He says early 2024. What do you think? Is the cash going to run out? Are we going to get into a recession? Well, you know that I have said for quite a while that I thought a recession was more likely than not for exactly the reason that he suggested, which is that the Fed is uh, fighting a pretty uh, entrenched inflation right, right now. And so the possibility of recession, I think, is still there. And early 2024 seems like it's a reasonable possibility. There's a lot of debate around here about this piece of it, but also right. whether Jay Powell is going to actually uh, go farther, meaning there's the two rate increases that seem to be set on the table. At least that's the conventional wisdom. I think. Are you in the camp of there's more common even beyond that? I'm certainly in that camp. And the reason is that uh, inflation is really quite intractable. And they've been very clear about getting it down to the 2%. And right. so I think facing that kind of uh, inflationary pressure forces them to keep going until they are clearly convinced that inflation is on a downward trajectory. And that might uh, take them to, to three rate hikes, possibly more, if the data call for it. So you think there's three rate hikes in, that, in this calendar year? I think there are three rate hikes uh, this calendar year, early next. So okay. you know, trying to call the year is really right. less important than where the terminal rate's going to be. And I think the market is once again perhaps off just a bit right. by being a little optimistic the Fed's going to be done perhaps before the Fed itself is ready to call all clear. You heard that right, guys. Quite a few more interest rate hikes in the near future if they go on with this. So a recession is typically defined as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Now, if we're looking at the hard numbers, we're quite far from a recession. The Commerce Department's recent report on the GDPs for the second quarter shows a very positive growth of 2.4%. The GDP trends have shown some slowing, but the recent increase from 2% in Q1 to 2.4% in Q2, it suggests that the idea of a recession might be challenged. The GDP now model from the Atlanta Federal Reserve even predicts explosive growth of 3.9% for the third quarter, although this forecast may actually be fluctuating recently. But then again, we did have a recession. You guys remember that, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. But our leaders then decided to go ahead and change the definition of a recession. So I guess that kind of means that we won't have a recession until after election day. I think about 80% of us have actually believed we've been in a recession for a while already. I've already felt like we've been in a recession. What about you guys? Now, it's scary just to think like what things will look like when they do actually call it a recession. You know what I mean? I mean, digging deeper into the data, it's pretty clear that while the GDP figures, they seem positive, other indicators tell a different story. Consumer debt has reached record levels with credit card debt, student loan debt, and delinquencies on the rise. But despite these different appearances, the financial health of American consumers, it seems to be going down the drain. Cash balances have fallen back to pre-pandemic levels when accounting for inflation. And guess what, guys? This discrepancy, it's evidence across various aspects of daily life. The warnings have been sounded for more than a year. A recession is going to be hitting the United States, and there's no arguing that. If not this quarter, then probably by next quarter, or maybe even the quarter after that, or maybe next year. So is a recession still in sight? Well, the latest signs say maybe not, or at least not in the way that we conventionally think of a recession. Now, despite higher borrowing costs, thanks to the Federal Reserve's aggressive streak of interest rate hikes, consumers, they keep spending and employers, they keep hiring. Gas prices have dropped and grocery prices have leveled off, giving Americans even more spending power. The economy keeps managing to grow. And so does the belief among some economists that the United States might actually achieve an elusive soft landing in which growth actually slows, but households and businesses spend just enough to avoid a full-blown recession? Well, according to The Economist, we could instead see a rolling recession in which only some industries shrink while the overall economy remains above water. Others think that the United States is actually experiencing what they call a rich session, where basically major job cuts concentrated on higher paying industries like technology and finance, heavy with professional workers who generally have the financial cushions to withstand layoffs. Job cuts in those fields, as a result, are less likely to sink the overall economy. 
But still, the threat does loom. The Fed is all but certain to keep raising rates at least once more, and they're likely to keep them high for months. That'll continue to put heavy borrowing costs on consumers and on businesses. And so this is why some economists caution that a full-blown recession could still happen in America. Student loan payments are starting back up, and they will definitely make a pretty big impact on consumer spending. Now, if we're not in a recession now, then we will be once they start back up in October. Now, if you guys found this information interesting, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel for more updates on the economy and other related topics. You guys' support definitely helps out with the Financial Freedom Fam, bringing you valuable insights. So I appreciate that, you guys. But here's how it could all play out. So first, we could see a rolling recession when different sectors of the economy take their turns contracting with some declines while others keep expanding. The economy as a whole manages to avoid a full-fledged recession, but that doesn't necessarily make it easier for the average American, does it? The housing market got hit when the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates 15 months ago. This led to higher mortgage rates and fewer home sales, which by the way, are down 20% from last year. Manufacturing also had problems, with factory production dropping by 0.3% compared to a year ago. Overall, people have been spending more money on services and experiences rather than like physical material products. The tech industry, they're feeling it too. After the pandemic, people spent less time online and started actually going to physical stores, restaurants more, which ultimately caused companies like Meta, Zoom, and Google to start cutting jobs. Now, on a positive note, people actually spent more money on travel and entertainment. This actually helped the service industry big time. But this spending might actually slow down as pandemic savings decrease. Still, the housing market might recover and actually boost the economy as seen in the 12% rise in new home sales from April to May. And this is even with high mortgage rates and higher home prices. Other sectors are growing as well, like education, government, healthcare, which by the way, are less affected by changes in interest rates and they're still hiring. Experts are actually saying that if the United States economy does land softly, these ups and downs in different sectors will play a big role in the whole story. But then again, you know, there's also the rich session narrative, right? And so right now, rich folks in the United States, they're not exactly struggling. Yep, they're doing pretty okay because the stock market has been getting better and better this year. But most of the big job losses that happened last year were in the higher paying jobs, which is a little bit unusual if you think about it. Now, normally when things get bad, it's the lower paid jobs, kind of like restaurants and stores that go away first. But this time, things were different. So instead of those usual jobs disappearing, we're actually seeing more jobs being added, even though it costs more for construction companies to borrow money. The jobs that went away are mostly the office type jobs and jobs that need a lot of training, like at companies like Uber and Grubhub. The banking and media industries, they're also having trouble keeping jobs. But still, many of the people who actually lost jobs, they're well educated and they should be able to find a new job pretty quickly. And so that actually helps the number of people without jobs from going way up, even though lots of jobs were actually lost. Now, this different situation has made different industries, kind of like the government and areas like restaurants, stores and transportation, look for people who lost their jobs at the bigger tech companies. Now, the idea is that richer workers usually have money saved up. So even if they lose their job, you know, they can just keep spending and that helps the economy. So even though the office jobs are going away, it might not hurt how much regular people spend as much as job losses in other areas. Plus this different kind of job market, it could make people spend money and find jobs in a different way. With the rise of remote work, gig economy opportunities, and technological advancements, the sky's the limits, guys. Plus with the industry Industries embracing flexible arrangements, online platforms, people have greater flexibility to choose how and where they work. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below in this video. Now, I want you guys to understand that the changing job market is also affecting how people shop and spend their money. So, for example, with more people working from home or taking on short term gigs, they might buy more things online, like comfy home office equipment or maybe tools for their side gigs. And since people can choose when and where they work, they might spend differently, like grabbing a coffee at a local cafe during their work break instead of just going to the office cafeteria. Plus, the rise of app-based jobs have been lending to unique spending habits for Americans, kind of like ordering food delivery or using ride share services like Uber and Lyft whenever we need it. Have you guys noticed this shift? This shift in the job landscape is definitely changing how the money flows in our economy, especially since people are adapting to their changing work situations and lifestyles. Now, another theory, maybe there's gonna be no recession at all. So yeah, guys, they're pointing to recent good news in the economy. Now, one big positive one is that many jobs are still being added. Around 300,000 jobs on average over the 
past six months. And the number of people without jobs is still pretty low at 3.7%. Even factories are doing better than expected as shown by the increased orders for things like machines and for computers. A top economist at Goldman Sachs recently said the change of a recession in the next year went down from 35% to 25% because of these different positive changes. Other experts actually say that the economy doesn't have the big problems that caused past previous recessions, like when the stock market crashed back in 2001 during the dot-com bubble, or you know maybe when there was a housing market crisis during 2008. One economist put it this way, the risk of a recession is going down fast. And even if we have to use you know different words to describe it, it's not really a recession anymore. But what do you guys think? Do you actually feel what they're saying here? Over the past 14 months, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates at the fastest pace in 40 years to bring down inflation. Now, typically when the Fed hikes rates so aggressively, borrowing to buy a home, build a factory and other purchases, they become super duper expensive. Economic activity declines, the stock market tumbles, and of course, a recession typically follows. But most economists still expect a recession in the second half of the year. They're saying that the Federal Reserve's high interest rate environment eventually will be felt more deeply by consumers and by businesses. Now, at the same time, banks are pulling back lending because of deposit runs that led to a collapse of several regional banks early this year. And of course, there's no inverted yield curve. Normally, interest rates are higher for long-term bonds than shorter-term ones because investors need to be rewarded for risking their money for a longer period. But the yield on the two-year treasury bond has been well above the 10-year treasury for months. That's been a consistent signal of a recession because investors move money into safer long-term assets pushing their prices up and their yields down. This is when the economic outlook grows dimmer.